released for publication? Yes, I have. For On Second Thought? Yes. And for Comcast? Yes. Okay, and your name is? Mary Ruart, R-U-W-A-R-T. You're a doctor of? Biophysics, PhD in biophysics. A PhD in biophysics. Now, the last time I took a physics course, that's a pretty tough course. <laughs> I don't think I did well. Uh, but your, your occupation is? I was a research scientist for about 25 years. And now I teach communication skills for scientists. Okay. Dr. Ruard, can I call you Mary? Yes, please. Um, you authored this book called Healing Our World. Our World. Mm -hmm. And it approaches healing our world from a libertarian point of view? That's correct. And you did a first edition, which is all sold out? Yes. And a second edition, which is all sold out? Almost sold out. I want to ask you what made you become a libertarian and what year did it happen? It happened in 1967 or 68 and I became a libertarian when I realized that it was um, less loving to force someone to help the poor uh, than it was to simply allow them to choose not to help if they wanted to. <laughs> okay. And that was in the 60s? Yes. I, I read Ayn, Ayn Rand's work. And even though I um, had never heard of this concept before, uh, very shortly after it was explained and debated with me a little bit, I recognized that letting people choose was the loving thing to do. Do you think if most people heard the Libertarian Party's platform and the practical applications this would have in our life that most voters would vote Libertarian? I think if they really understood it, they would, because it's basically the same policy by which we relate to each other on a one-to-one -one basis. I mean, I wouldn't come to your house and take your money at gunpoint to give it to the charity of my choice. Right. A good way of saying it. <laughs> right. So, so we shouldn't do that group to group either because, you know, if I aggressed against you, you'd be angry at me and you'd probably retaliate. We'd go back and forth. We'd spend all our time fighting instead of... And never of, help the people that right. <laughs> somebody wanted to help. Exactly. Very so, good point. So if we do this group to group, which we do through taxation, we're actually having the same process going on and the big losers in the end are the poor. Now, when did you join the Libertarian Party? I think I found it around 1980, 1981. And I actually may have joined somewhat before that, because I remember seeing an ad in Reason magazine for it, but I didn't get active until the early 80s. Okay. So what party did you belong to, or did you not even vote before that? Uh, I did vote on occasion, but I didn't belong to a formal party. I was more of an independent. I didn't realize until pretty late in the 70s or early in the 80s that there was a party that was the party of non-aggression, the party of principle, the Libertarian Party. Do you think the Libertarian Party is going to wither away, or is it going to continue growing? Well, I think that the Libertarian movement as a whole is, is going to really take root in the country again and turn things around. Whether the Libertarian Party will, uh, will do that by electing people or simply by educating the public, it's rather hard to know at this point. Uh, the Socialist Party got their platform into the Democrat and Republican Party without electing too many people. Now, I don't know if that's how it will happen with the Libertarians or if we'll actually elect Congress and the President. Time will tell. Okay. What was the first convention you ever remember going to, the first Libertarian Party convention? Oh, you mean uh, national or state? Either. Okay. I think, well, I went to the Michigan convention, and I think that, again, was in the early 80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, who was the chairman of the Michigan Libertarian Party then? Let's see. It might have been Tim O'Brien. I'm not sure. There's several people that were rotating the chair at the time, okay. so I can't quite remember. Is he still active in the party oh, now? Oh, yes. Yes. I think he's chair again, actually. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this what you've seen in the Libertarian Party? People that finally decide to join the Libertarian Party, they never go back to anything else. Isn't that Very rarely. True? Very rarely. Once you, it's sort of like, once you understand and you become a libertarian, most that I've run into at this convention cannot think of going back to the Democrat or Republican Party. Well, that's right, because it's like learning to make change. You know, when you're a little child and you're learning, you know, about nickels, dimes, and pennies, it's easy for someone to come to you and say, oh, why don't you give me, um, you know, why don't you let me, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here, 
um, you know, if you had a dime, for example, it's small. So you might willingly trade that for a penny or a nickel, thinking that you're getting a better deal because you're getting a bigger coin, but of course you're being cheated. Right. So uh, once you get cheated enough and you figure out what the real system is, and, and you understand how to make change, no one will ever cheat you again. It's something you know automatically. Yeah. And it's, that's the same thing being a libertarian. Once you understand the non-aggression principle, and you realize it's the good neighbor policy that you know works on the one-to-one -one level, you know it's going to work on the group-to-group -group level, and there's no reason to violate it because it'd be like cheating yourself again. Okay. What's, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> what city and state do you live in? I live in Burnett, Texas. Burnett, Texas. That's right. Now, are there any elected libertarians in Burnett, Texas? Not as far as I know. Are there any elected libertarians in all of Texas? Uh, yes, I believe there are several. In fact, uh, a good friend of mine uh, was elected to the River Authority, and he served now, I think, for six years. Six years. So the libertarians are winning more and more, aren't they? Oh, yes, especially in local offices, although we have had several state reps. And certainly we have people in, at least one person in Congress, uh, Ron Paul, who was our former presidential candidate, who right. was a libertarian at heart, but has run under the Republican ticket so he could stay in Congress. And he's frequently the only no vote on certain legislation, isn't he? That's right. He's known as Dr. No, oftentimes, <laughs> uh, because he will vote against any taxes or regulation that don't promote uh, the defense courts or um, the police in some way because, of course, those are the defensive functions of the government, and that's the only thing that libertarians believe that government should have as, as its role. I believe he was the only no vote on sending troops to Bosnia, wasn't he? Probably. And uh, he, he seems to frequently be a, a loner and doesn't seem to bother him at all, Dr. Ron Paul, to be the only no vote in Congress. Well, he knows he's doing the right thing, and the more that he is able to state his views and vote his views, hopefully the more other people in Congress will understand and appreciate the libertarian perspective. Do you think the libertarians will elect some congressmen in the next 10 years? I would say the probabilities are high. Did you, were you aware of the libertarians abolished the Alaska state income tax 20 years ago? Yes, yes. In fact, we had some state reps in Alaska as well. Yeah, it took just two state reps to do that, right? Um, I'm not sure how many were involved, but I know that the Libertarians as a party were actually heavily involved in promoting that idea as well. Do you think that's going to happen in Texas? I would like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think if we elected two Libertarians in this Texas legislature, that would be sufficient moral authority to get the state income tax abolished? Well, in Texas, we don't have a state income tax. We don't? No. We have a sales tax. Could they get the sales tax abolished, or is think, it too popular? Oh, no, I don't think it's popular at all. I think they should, could get it cut back considerably. Okay. Um, have you held any positions in the party as, like, state chair, national chair? Mm, I've been like? county chair. I've been on the LNC. I've been on the platform committee. Um, I'm currently on the strategic planning committee. Um, I think those are probably the only official offices that I've held. Okay. Now you, you've already sold out your first edition and your second edition of your book? Second edition is almost gone. This summer there will be a third edition. How many printing are you going to print in the third edition of your book? I haven't decided yet. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, and thank you. It's so nice being next to her, Bob. <laughs> I want to keep this going and going, but my <laughs> cameraman's telling me the tape is out. Okay.